So uh, think about this with me. Think about this. Just really be honest. Think about this with me. And God's not embarrassed and he's not trying to hide the truth and he wants it to be discovered and he wants us to see the magnitude of what's happened uh, on earth as a result of Jesus coming to the earth. So consider this. Consider, consider this. Does it make any reasonable sense that because Adam and Eve ate some forbidden fruit, that the whole creation is cursed, that there's the animals die, there's, there's terrible diseases, there's uh, murder, there's child abuse, there's uh, the sex slave trade, uh, all of these things that we know inside of us are horrifically wrong, but this has come upon the whole earth. This has come upon the whole earth, and not just for our time. It's been happening for all time, all of human time. There has been nothing but plagues and 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 wars and, and diseases, uh, all kinds of horrific things that have happened because Adam and Eve did this. But this came on the whole planet. D does that does that sound right to you? Uh, although. Uh, uh, that's the explanation that we get in church that, that Adam and Eve did this and this has all come upon us and, and uh, we're, we're all a bunch of terrible sinners and we deserve hell, blah, 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 blah. And this is, this is what we're forced to believe in the name of Jesus, you know, and come on, that, that's what we get. And uh, I'm not saying that, uh, the name of Jesus is wrong. I'm just saying that the myopic understanding of those people that have been teaching us uh, needs to be questioned. I don't care about Arrhenius and all these amazing church fathers and all these people and the Sistine Chapel and the statues and all these things that have come down to us that help form our thinking. Uh, we need to step back and say, okay, Lord, what are we missing here? Uh, teach us from your word and help us understand the meaning of this plague on the earth. And it, there, there's a plague on the earth and it's going to end up with everybody dying. And you're going, and Adam and Eve set this in motion by what they did. That one simple little thing that they did really is incredibly uh, hard to comprehend and, and to even accept if, if you're a modern day thinker and, and, and question God, is there something more to this story that we're missing that hasn't been added? Because remember, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't endure them for now. And, and have we come to a point in time where we're ready to hear something that is maybe out of the box, but not out of the scriptures, but we just haven't seen? So, well, how could that be? I mean, we've had all these great theologians, so many commentaries been written. Uh, how can, are you out of your mind? You must be a heretic. In fact, some guy wrote, uh, put on online that I was uh, that, that, that what I'm talking about is a her heresy goes back to the first century, and that th this kind of thing shouldn't be questioned, and and this guy should be avoided at all costs. And so I'm like, I'm saying like really, um, what I'm saying isn't unscriptural, and what I'm saying isn't uh, um, without some substance from the scriptures. Uh, so if you have the courage to get outside of the church. And I don't know how anybody can stay in the in the uh, the visible church uh, because God's church is invisible. You can't see it. Uh, it exists only because He knows who whose are His. And I went to a church we had thousands of people come, and many of them were reprobates that can't showed up, and they may have got to know the Lord and then fell away. Well, they never were in the first place. That's what the the uh, so many people would say. I was like, well, that may be, but you know what? Uh, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that what you see in the congregations aren't necessarily the church. Maybe some people are, but a lot of them aren't. So anyway, anyway, uh, I, and I want to talk about that theologically down the road with regard to the temple of God, because Jesus redefined the temple as himself and all those that receive his spirit. That's the temple of God. That's the church. But we'll get more into that later. Nonetheless, I'm just trying to hammer home a point here with regards to look at all that's happened, all the ships of war, all the famines, all the diseases, all the death, 
everything here dies. Even the trees die. I don't care how old they are. The redwoods are going to die. All the animals in the sea. Everything dies on this planet because of what Adam and Eve did. I'm sorry. There's got to be some more to the story than this. And that's what I want to get into. I want to talk about uh, not the fact that you're just a sinner, which we all are born into this condition called iniquity and then the lawlessness in the world that we're seeing, especially now in the political world, uh, is a manifestation of that nature of human nature that that Jesus came to fix. And uh, that that's the reality that uh, is our our hope. But we are in a condition here on this planet of darkness, spiritual darkness, uh, the plague on the earth that Jesus came to break. Well, if he came to break it, how come it isn't, it isn't broken? Well, he's got to return yet for that to happen on a terrestrial level. But for us that believe in the Lord, uh, he came to fix us. And that's the process we're in now as we learn to understand uh, this whole issue of, of, of lawlessness that, that is rampant now. And, uh, and of the void that we're in that that our flesh is part of. The flesh is part of the world. Our physical bodies are part of the world. And we're not of the world. So we're, we're actually a duplicitous system of spirit and body. And our soul needs to be redeemed. So that that's the whole issue that's happening right now in us on this planet. It, for those that are called, is, the, is learning the process, understanding why... Uh, uh, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. doesn't make sense. Uh, but the things that we go through in this life are the disciplines of God, that God uses the circumstances that we find ourselves in to, to discipline us like a father. The, the, these are the stripes of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, the world of Christianity, especially the Pentecostals who believe in physical healing, and I do too, uh, uh, fundamentally apply that to the material, physical reality of ourselves, not the spiritual reality of ourselves. So the, the healing that God wants to bring is the straightening out of our inner man that's been perverted and afflicted and twisted, and that he'll make it straight. And these afflictions on the outside uh, of us are really God's way of disciplining us. He's a father and he disciplines us through the brokenness of the world. <laughs> it's quite a story, isn't it? But unless we uh, come to grips with the fact that we're living in a fallen world and even our bodies are part of the fallenness of the world, uh, then we don't understand what these afflictions are all about and why does this happen to me, Lord? If the, and, and yet uh, th this is the blessing of the Lord to to use those things externally in this in this void, in this vacuum, uh, to bring us to more of a sense of looking to him for this light momentary affliction of these trials and tribulations work for us a far more exceeding weight of glory, which is applied to our inner man, our spirit, as we look not at the things that are seen, the physical maladies and all the pro problems of the world, but we look to the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are passing away, but the things that are unseen are eternal in the heavens. So we need to embrace the discipline of the Lord and not be angry at God. A lot of people will be angry and shake their fist at him, and they are angry at him. And How could a loving God do this? Because the disciplines of God are actually his love. If we, if we invert the issues of life, and we see them as his love to us, then we can say, thank you, Father, even for the trials. The blessings are easy to thank you for, but we don't see the trials as a blessing. We see them as really uh, grievous. No discipline for the moment seems like it's a lot of fun, but afterwards it produces the, the yield of righteousness, which is what we should be longing for. So anyway, uh, I want to talk more about this issue of who we are in the next session.